Cartoon Network has had a huge slew of shows since its launch in October of 1992. It has housed some of the biggest cartoons ever, like Adventure Time and Regular Show, but not every show has been as popular as those. Some of the shows were aired, cancelled, and never thought of again until now. These forgotten shows are what I'm talking about today. These are Cartoon Network shows that you forgot existed. The Cramp Twins. This show follows non-identical twins Wayne and Lucien Cramp. Their personalities constantly clash and almost never get along. It ran for two seasons with 52 episodes in total. It originated in the UK, airing from 2001 to 2002, with reruns lasting all the way into 2010. But in the US, it's a slightly different and more complicated story. When it first aired in the US, it was not on Cartoon Network. Instead, it was on Fox and on there it aired from 2003 to 2006. During this time, it would go on to air on Cartoon Network from 2004 to 2005. Cartoon Network canceled the show to put Tokyo Mew Mew in its spot. You can currently watch the show on YouTube and Amazon. This show is set in 100 million AD on a satellite that roams Earth. In the year 100 million AD, Earth is a utopia and there are no more problems. All the nations have joined as one, but never mind this because the show never actually visits Earth in this time period. The show follows Officer Buck, a time cop, who is all brawn and no brains. Larry 3000, a robot created for diplomatic reasons, but is now rendered useless since all the nations combine into one. And Otto Osworth, an eight-year-old orphan illegally traveling with the two because of his immense knowledge of history. Each episode, the three of them travel through time to ensure the events of history do not change. For example, they meet Beethoven, and instead of having a passion for music, he wants to become a wrestler. So the Time Squad gets Beethoven back on the correct path. Another episode features Einstein, but instead of being a scientist, he is a salesman. So once again, the Time Squad gets him on the right path. The show was indirectly teaching kids about history. I mean, teaching might be the wrong word, but at least informing a little bit. The show ran for only two seasons from 2001 to 2003. Reruns lasted until 2005. The show was pretty well received, so you may be wondering, why was it canceled? Well, controversy. Of course, controversy. In the final episode of the series, the Time Squad meets George W. Bush, who was the current president at the time of the episode aired. Instead of doing his presidential duties, he is too focused on a ball of twine. Yeah, thanks. That's good, but uh, I was wondering, uh, how's that other thing coming along? Other thing? That thing we talked about. You know, a giant ball of twine. That's it. That's why this show got canceled. The episode only ever aired once. So much for free speech, huh? I can think of so many more worse things the Time Squad could have done. For example, they could have traveled to Germany in the 1940s. Anyway... I had a TV show! You do! The Moxie Show! Oh yeah, right! The Moxie Show. This is the first Cartoon Network show. It was revolutionary for the time. It is considered the first live cartoon. No, that does not mean it was broadcast live. What it does mean is that it's one of the first motion capture CG animated shows where an actor would be doing the movements for Moxie. The Moxie show was more of a variety show, mainly featuring other cartoons and then quick intervals with Moxie and his friend Flea, who was voiced by Penn Jillette and eventually being replaced by Chris Rock. The series ran from December of 1993 to December of 1995. Reruns ran from 95 to 2000. The show wasn't super well received. Most of the show is lost media. No DVDs were ever made of this, and of course it's not on any streaming service. Services, so the few clips on YouTube is your best bet. The Life and Times of Juniper Lee. Why do writers feel the need to make show titles so ridiculously long? This show follows preteen Juniper Lee, who lives in Orchid Bay City, which is home to tons of magical activity and houses monsters and demons, both good and evil. The human and magical worlds are separated by a barrier called the Veil, which prevents any ordinary people from seeing any magic-related activity or creatures. This is starting to sound like a Harry Potter ripoff to me. Juniper has been chosen to be the new protector and keeper of balance between the two worlds. To help her achieve this, she becomes magically enhanced. The show premiered in May of 2005, but was canceled after three seasons, ending in April of 2007. The show was renewed for a fourth and fifth season, but was suddenly canceled for unknown reasons, leaving the show on a cliffhanger. Most episodes would demonstrate Juniper Lee's struggles through basic preteen life, all the while fighting monsters of the magic world. Does anyone like this animation style? I think these characters are super ugly. All their heads are so squashed. My name is 
is Hector Concarne, and I will one day rule the world! <laughs> Reading the synopsis for this show really makes me realize anything will get greenlit for an actual show. Okay, before I tell you about the show, you need some backstory as to why it exists. In 2001, a show called Grim and Evil premiered, but this show was promptly cancelled in 2002. Cartoon Network separated the series into the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy and Evil Con Carne. Good, now that that's out of the way, Evil Con Carne follows Hector Con Carne, who is a brain and stomach put into a circus bear. Now you may be wondering, why is he just a brain? Well, he was once a dude, but he got blown up and his body parts landed everywhere and anywhere. So his brain and stomach went into this bear and now he plots and schemes to take over the world because that's what bad guys are supposed to do, right? His plans are sometimes hindered by an organization known as Spork. Is that supposed to be funny? It's not important what that stands for, just know that they stop him whenever he gets close to doing something big. This show ran from 2003 to 2004, with three seasons in total. It was cancelled due to the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy being much more popular. The characters from this show would go on to make multiple cameos in Billy and Mandy. There's not a ton to say about this one. Mike, despite the name, is a female foreign exchange student. She requests to be put on a tropical island and her wish is granted. But turns out this island is barely mapped, and I guess the island disappears and reappears. Quote, It sinks and pops back up like a cork. There are natives to this island, who are descendants of a British shipwreck. Lou and Og are two of the natives. Lou has a stuck-up princess complex, and Og is the stereotypical genius inventor archetype. The three of them go on multiple adventures and share customs with each other. The show premiered in 1999, ran for two seasons, and ended in 2001. Reruns aired from 2001 to 2003, and then on Boomerang, reruns began in 2006 and lasted all the way into 2011. Created by Everett Peck, the same guy that created Duckman, follows Rodney J. Squirrel. He is the titular Squirrel Boy. His owner, Andy, and Rodney go on adventures together. Andy's father, Bob, is disapproving of Andy and Rodney's friendship. Rodney has a few squirrel friends, Leon, this blue squirrel, and Darlene, a yellow squirrel, who is also Rodney's love interest. Honestly, the only reason I remember this show is because of these McDonald's toys. The show premiered in 2006, ran for two seasons, and was cancelled in 2007. Without watching the show and only reading about it, it kind of sounds like the typical boy befriends anthropomorphic animal trope for a show. Kind of like Stewie and Brian, Eliza and Darwin, or Peabody and Sherman, just to name a few. I can't say that for sure because I haven't watched it, but that's just my impression. <laughs> Jones. Whatever happened to Robot Jones? What did happen to him? Well, short answer, he was cancelled. Running from July of 2002 to November of 2003, with a total of two seasons, Whatever Happened to Robot Jones follows, you guessed it, Robot Jones. He is a 12-year-old robot attending human middle school. This was the last Cartoon Network cartoon to use cell animation before they switched to digital. That's why this show looks 100 years old. The show is supposed to be set in the 80s, so it is appropriate. In the first season, before they dubbed it, Robot Jones had a completely text-to-speech voice. I am ready to begin my human studies. But later in season two, they got a voice actor and then had him redo all the season one lines for reruns. After the show ended in 2003, Reruns lasted until 2006. So what happened to Robot Jones? Well, he faded into obscurity like these other shows on this list. Am I wrong? Do you remember any of these cartoons? I plan on doing another one of these Forgotten Cartoon Network shows videos because I have barely scratched the surface. Let me know if there are any cartoons that weren't on here that you'd like to see next time. <laughs>